So we are trying to understand consumer theory. And in the previous video, what I tried to explain is consumer preferences. And we have assumed that this person can measure utility in precise terms, or what we are using is cardinal utility. And then we looked at what is marginal and total utility, the relationship between the two, and also explain what is law of diminishing marginal utility. Here is a copy of the table that I had used in my previous video, which essentially outlines this person's complete con preferences in terms of cardinal utility that this person derives from watching movies and drinking sodas. So let us use this table to look at actual consumption choices. Now suppose the income of this person is $30 and income is represented by the letter I and price of a movie represented by PM equals the price of sodas which is represented by PS and each of them are priced at $3. So based on this financial reality that is income equals $30 and price of a movie equals price of sodas equals $3 what consumption choices does this person have? For example, if this person decides to buy no movies, what is the maximum quantities of sodas this person could buy? If this person decides to borrow or save nothing, then it will be 10 units of sodas. If this person decides to watch one movie without borrowing any money or uh, saving any money, or in a way living within the budget constraint, what is the maximum quantity of sodas this person could buy? It will be nine units of sodas. If this person decides to watch two movies, what is the maximum quantities of sodas this person can buy? It will be eight units. And in this way, we can complete this table. And what this table will represent are consumption choices available to this person given the financial reality or the budget constraint. <clears throat> now here what we have is the consumption choices available to this person when income is $30 and price of a movie is $3 and price of sodas is also $3. So these consumption choices, this is a complete set of consumption choices available to this person when this person borrows nothing and saves nothing or budget is a binding constraint. You cannot go over it or you cannot be under it. Now I have created columns with respect to marginal and total utility from movies as well as from sodas. And then the last column is total utility that this person gets when this person consumes both these goods. That is total utilities from movies and sodas. So what we should do is, because we are given the preferences of this person in the sense we know what is the marginal utility from watching no movie, what is the marginal utility from watching one movie, first movie, what is the marginal utility from watching the second movie, and we also know the total utility based on table 1b. So we just copy these numbers with respect to marginal utility and total utility for movies, and we do the same thing for sodas. And based on these total utility numbers, we just add them up and create this last column. So this is a complete table based on consumption choices available to the person given the budget constraint. And we have just copied the marginal utility number, the total utility number from table 1b. And we have added up total utility from movies with total utilities from sodas. And we have derived this last column. Now remember the assumption we had made about the consumer is that this person wants to maximize total satisfaction or total utility given the budget constraint. And so you look at this last column and just try to locate the point where this person is receiving maximum total utility and you will find this happens 
at a level of 381 units of total utility. And so this point is the best point for this consumer. Why? Given the budget constraint and the preferences of this person, this, is, this point gives this person maximum total utility. So this point, we can refer this as consumer equilibrium or the best point. Or at this point, the consumer is maximizing total utility subject to the budget constraint. <clears throat> so at this point, how many units of movie should this person watch to be at the best point? It should be five units of movies. And how many sodas should this person buy? He should buy five units of sodas. So as compared to all other consumption choices, if this person decides to watch five movies and also buy five sodas, it's only then that this person will be maximizing total utility or will this person be at consumer equilibrium. So here is the definition of consumer equilibrium and that is the consumption choice that gives maximum total utility or TU given the budget constraint. Now let us look at consumer equilibrium from a different perspective. Once again, we have quantities here from movies and sodas. These are the numbers relating to marginal utilities and these are numbers relating to total utilities. Now in this column, as well as this column, let us do the following. Let us divide marginal utility from movies by its own price, which is $3. And in this column, we do the same and we just do marginal utility from sodas divided by the price of sodas, which is $3. So 50, 0 divided by $3 will be 0. 50 divided by $3 will be 16.7. And in this way, we can complete this table. Similarly, we do the same thing for sodas. We divide marginal utility by its own price, which is $3. So 0 divided by $3 is 0, 75 divided by $3 is 25, 42 divided by $3 is 14, and so on. Now note, we have already determined that this is consumer equilibrium, where total utility is maximized, subject to the budget constraint, and how many units of sodas will this person buy? Five units of sodas. And how many movies would this person watch? It will be five movies. And that's where we have consumer equilibrium or the consumer is maximizing total satisfaction. Look at another result which is interesting. Marginal utility divided by price of movies is 8.3 when this person watches five movies and marginal utility divided by price of sodas is also 8.3 or in other words these two are exactly the same that is marginal utility divided by movies divided by price of movies equals marginal utility from sodas divided by price of sodas and at this point, which is five units of movies and five units of sodas, this person is maximizing total utility. So at this point, we find this is also met or these two are equal. And so what this tells us is the following. We have another decision rule with respect to consumer equilibrium where the person maximizes total utility subject to the budget constraint and that is marginal utility from movies divided by price of movies must equal marginal utility from sodas divided by price of sodas at consumer equilibrium. So here is the condition for consumer equilibrium and I've just copied this marginal utility from movies divided by its price must equal marginal utility from sodas divided by its price. And we have just done this for two goods. We can do this 
for all the goods this person buys it may not just be two but hundreds of different goods and the decision rule is consumer is at equilibrium when marginal utility divided by its price must equal across all commodities or all products so this is from the first product this is from the second product and this will go on till the nth product so this becomes the condition for consumer equilibrium so we know what is consumer equilibrium it's at a point like 5 5 and here the total utility is at a maximum given the budget constraint and here we find marginal utility of movies divided by its price equals marginal utilities from sodas divided by its price now look at some other point for example if this person decides to watch one movie and purchase nine sodas and look at the total utility this person is getting it is lower than what this person can have at consumer equilibrium so sometimes we ask the following question what should this person do if this person is sitting at a point like this one that is one unit of movie and nine units of sodas how can this person maximize total satisfaction and here you will observe marginal utility from movies divided by its own price is greater than marginal utility from sodas divided by its own price and what this person needs to do is move to this point 55 five. and what this person has to do is increase consumption of movies and reduce consumption of sodas and it will he should go on doing this till this person maximizes total satisfaction now note in a mechanical sense marginal utility by price of movies is greater than marginal utility of sodas divided by its price this person cannot change the price the only thing this person can change is marginal utilities and for these two to be equal to one another what this person needs to do is reduce marginal utility from movies and increase marginal utility from sodas and he should go on doing it till these two are equal these two ratios are equal so how can person reduce marginal utility from movies because of law of diminishing marginal utilities as we increase consumption of this product its marginal utility will decline because of law of diminishing marginal utility and as this person reduces consumption of sodas what happens to marginal utility it goes on becoming bigger and bigger and so this person can alter the consumption choices just consumption choices given the budget constraint and will be eventually able to hit equilibrium point where this person maximizes total utility once again this is the condition for equilibrium that ratio of marginal utility from movies divided by its price must equal marginal utility from sodas divided by its price when this happens the consumer is maximizing total utility and it's entirely possible the consumer may also be out of equilibrium or may not be at the best point and for example if this is true that is marginal utility from movies divided by its price is greater than marginal utility from sodas divided by its price in such a case we ask the question what should this person do to maximize total utility and the solution is this person must alter his, his consumption behavior or consumption basket and what he should do because of law of diminishing marginal utility is increase consumption of movies and reduce consumption of sodas and continue to do so till this person is able to hit equilibrium point so this completes this lecture video thank you for your time